Welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul Durienzo, and we've got, as usual, another great show. Uh, Joel Simmons is joining us. He's Simpson. the author. Pardon? Simpson. Simpson. Did I say what? Simmons. Simmons. I am so sorry, okay. Joel. Okay. We were just talking about names, right? And right. And I got yeah. your name wrong the that's first right. time around, but that's good. Well, here it is. Okay. Joel Simpson. All right. And here is his book, Earth Forms. Intimate Portraits of Our Planet. Very good. Thank you very much. And it's, I was just looking at this book. I've just seen it for the first time now, and it's such a wonderful book. It's just filled with photographs, and we're going to talk about that and how you took these photographs, and we're going to look at so many of them. You brought so many. I brought prints, yeah. Prints, easy yes. To say. Sure. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So, uh, and, of course, this is, if you want more information, you can get the book. <laughs> I don't know. If, is it politically correct for me to hold up well, Amazon? We haven't we haven't sold it. We haven't <laughs> sold it yet. That's, that's, that's <laughs> but I'm just going to tell people that to watch for it's this. On so Amazon. They know. Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. they're going to watch for this. All right. So just watch for it. And uh, so, uh, Earth forms intimate portraits of our planet. Tell me about this book first before we get into anything. Go on. Well, I'll tell you. Um, I've done a lot of things in photography, and my great love has always been nature, and in particular, rock formations. I collected rocks and fossils as a kid. But for a number of years, uh, I was put off by what they call the ph photographic stock market, you know, stock mm -hmm. photography, uh -huh. because landscapes, these beautiful landscapes, were cheap yeah. and very obtainable. And I wasn't confident that I had anything original to offer. But as I got into uh, photographing this, and especially, and I, I, this is my advice to all photographers who are in love mm -hmm. with nature, don't just look at photographs. Look at photographs. See what people have done. See what the great landscape photographers have done. See Ansel Adams, David Munch, Jack Dykinga, Paul, um, Mike Fatale. L uh, absorb these people, mm -hmm. but also look at the rest of the visual arts. Look at painting. Especially look at surrealism and abstract expressionism. Because not only were the, those painters inspired by rock formations, but they felt, at least the abstract expressionists, felt that the en energy was coming through them and they were translating it directly in their movements onto the canvas. And, and guess what? The rock formations represents the energy of the magma, the igneous mm. rocks, and then the erosion of the sedimentary rocks, energy over periods of millions of years. They're sort of captured. Yeah, and then when we shape. say when we see when yeah. we see them out in nature, yeah. if we know how to frame and we know how to make compositions, that's the thing. You have to have a good sense of composition, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, then we can make we can make these chaotic yeah. formations make sense. That's what a photographer does. Yeah, that's right. Make sense out of chaos. Well, that's certainly that's absolutely that's that's one of the things we do, and we find we find incongruous juxtapositions, and that's surrealism. When did you discover photography? Oh, I was uh, I was 13 years old. What was your first camera? It was oh my, it was a Calamar A camera. What is that? It's a it's a um, it? manual focus film camera where the winding mechanism got all screwed up, and I got a lot of these. I got a lot of double exposures, and I'm going to date myself. My father took me to a Kennedy rally where Adlai Steve Kennedy wasn't there, but Frank Sinatra and Adlai Stevenson appeared, and I took pictures with my with my new strobe, and the, the, the winding mechanism went bad. And so in the same f slide, I was taking slides, right? ASA yeah. 10, yes. ISO 10, was, was my dog's new puppy and Adlai Stevenson. <laughs> well, this is, I was a surrealist before I knew it, right? Right, right, right. That's wonderful. What a great way, because there's plenty of pictures of Adlai Stevenson, but none with a puppy next to him. Uh, and bigger than him, too. Uh, that's wild. <laughs> I would exhibit that. Anyway, right, great. So, all right, you started, and then, uh, but then you went on to uh, get your PhD. You went yeah, I didn't. I didn't think photography was a serious profession. Yeah. So, and I wanted to educate well, it's myself. It's hard to make a living at it. That's for sure. Well, it's hard to make a li living at anything. But you know, you follow your passion, as yeah. as, uh, as Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss. And I followed a number of blisses. Mm -hmm. The first uh, first one, I got a PhD in comparative literature. And I taught English for, for five years in New, in New Orleans, and then I decided I wanted to be a jazz pianist, mm -hmm. my next bliss. What, was your did col what college did you, you taught? taught university level. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I got a job in New Orleans. I moved, mm -hmm. I moved down there. I stayed there for 27 years. I love that. You know, t this week is, uh, you know, Fat Mardi Gras. Today is Fat Tuesday, right? Is That's that right. today? It's yeah, today is it. It's, Mardi Gras. It's one of the latest days that Mardi Gras can occur. And uh, I did that for 27 years. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up doing a, another major digital uh, musical project at the end came out in '99, 
And then I moved back up here, you know, where I really belong. I love being in the New York area. I mm -hmm. live in New Jersey, and I, I travel all around. I, you know, I go to. Brooklyn. Did you grow up in the New York area? I grew up right in, right in, New, in Union, New Jersey, where I am right now. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. in, in the yeah. area. Right. And um, you know, I'm a New Jerseyan who who easily drives to Brooklyn. And my fellow New Jerseyans say, "Like Brooklyn, that's so far away." I said, "You don't have to take a plane to get there, <laughs> right. like you, like I did when I was in New Orleans." Right. But Although it, you might have to find a way to go there with the congestion pricing coming up. No, well, I rarely drive anymore into New York, mm -hmm. but the train is is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so I'm very very happy to be here, and right. of course it's the right the it's the art center, of, center of the world, of the right. world. Yeah, yeah, probably absolutely. the art center, especially. And we're coming up to yeah. Armory Show weekend mm -hmm. next weekend. Oh, the Armory, Armory Show. Big, big art weekend, international art weekend. There'll be people from all around the world coming to see. Where's the Armory coming. located? Just for people it's the, this, the Armory Show is on Pier 90, mm -hmm. so it's on the water. The it's original Armory was on the Lexington Avenue. It's still the, there, right? It's still there. That oh, there's an Armory there, but the original Armory that was started in 1880, I see. the show was started in 1913, was the famous one where, right. where Duchamp had the new descending aesthetics. That was on Lexington Avenue. Right. Right. But it's been on the on the piers now for uh -huh. a lot of years. Oh, well, great! So, uh, so artistic, visual. Um, what got you? What was this a dream of yours to travel the world? Absolutely. And, and I just want to open it randomly and just give, you know, viewers an idea of some of the incredible. That's Bistai Badlands in north northwestern New Mexico, one of my favorite places in the world. Uh huh. I'll wow. show you. I'll show you a few things. Yeah. yeah, yeah and the it question is, is beautiful. I how just do randomly you, open it? Cause yeah. How do you be original? Yeah. in landscapes, right? Yes. When there are people like Peter Lick, you ever heard of Peter Lick? He has he has galleries in Aspen. Oh, really? In, yeah, in Beverly Hills. I've probably been in them. He sells for, for uh -huh. tons of money. And he has these beautiful, unbelievable, f like fantasy landscapes. It's, uh -huh. it's photography. And he sells for, for thousands and thousands of dollars. But I'm, I'm not interested. What goes into a thousands and thousands of dollar picture? What does that make? Oh, like? his reputation. And, and they're really good. Yeah. They're like dreams. But I'm less interested in, in, in an, idealist, an idealized landscape mm -hmm. than I am in showing the real personality of the, of the right. planet. And that's what I've tried to do in this book. Well, because it's political. This is, I mean, it's also political. It, you're right. It's, it, and that's one of the things that attracted me to it. You're not just, t this is just not a coffee table book. At, in the beginning, you have, uh, besides all this beautiful uh, geological stuff, you have dedications dedicated to the water protectors of Standing Rock, North Dakota. Let me tell you the story. Yeah. I, was, I was out in Marin County, yeah. and um, Danny Sheehan was slated to speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, about the the conflict with um, energy transfer partners uh, over the, uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline. This, right. this is Marin County, okay, Coming and he's North Dakota, and he's located in Santa Cruz, okay. Mm -hmm. But they were doing a fundraising yeah. over there, and he told the whole story of the confrontation and also the mendacity of this oil company to get um, uh, to get per, uh, official permissions to to, to um, uh, extend their pipeline half mile by half mile so they didn't have to do the whole thing because then they would have been in violation of the law against putting a, a, a dangerous leaky pipeline near, near a minority community. Okay? So in order to avoid that, mm -hmm. they, they got these, uh, these permissions, these official permissions to do it. So, so that's really skirting the law. Right. So the, the Native Americans were up in arms about this. This, was, this, this could uh, poison their water mm -hmm. supply. Sure. It was holy land. So they started praying, mm -hmm. and then more people from around the world came in solidarity with them. Yeah. Uh, and at first, it was it was so kind of friendly. The protesters would chain themselves to the earth moving equipment, and the cops would saw them through. And then it got it got ugly, and they right, and the that. energy transfer partners brought in this company called Tiger Swan with with some uh, Blackwater alumni, and. Um, and they were using uh, water cannon and, and right. percussion and bombs. You know. Were you there for that period? No, no, no. I, but you I were was, there. You had, I, you no, were I was not there. I was not but, there. But in, you were in North Dakota. In, in I, went, I went there this summer. Yeah. So anyway, Danny told this whole story. And at that time, Chase Iron Eyes was under indictment for criminal chest, trespass. But this past August, right, the, yeah. the speech was the previous year, this past August, he got it thrown out when sure. he, showed the, he showed the court the facts. Right. right. What was really that, happening? Yeah. So I was so moved by this that I said, I'm going to dedicate my book to the water protection, try to raise some money for them. Sure. Right. And then, but and then I went to, 
I went online and I found Danny's speech that I had heard and I transcribed it. Mm -hmm. And then I sent it to them. He's a great speech maker, right? He's amazing. I sent it to them you. and they, together with me, we, we made it into a, a readable text. Yeah. And then I got Chase to write a piece and he eventually came up with something that's extremely moving, extremely spiritual. Yeah. I said, Chase, this is a poem. You know, I've yeah. taught English, I know right. from poetry. So I, I, I put it in, into lines and there it is, a poem. Right. And then I got uh, Stephanie Keith to license me four of her photographs of the actual confrontation. And they're in the book as well. And, and she's amazing. She, right. was, she was at Charlottesville. She's and incredible. She's a photojournalist. Right on the front lines. Charlottesville, where that horrible, where the woman was killed by the Nazis. Award, the that's right, that's right. Award-winning photojournalist. And those are her poem. pictures. Yeah. Then this past summer I went there yeah. Oh, I see and I took right. some pictures of the area. I took the, like uh -huh. for example, this panorama down there you might show right. over. It's, it's, it's small, but it's a panorama of right. the Missouri River, right, right where the protests right. were. Right. And you oh, can yeah. see it's this placid river. Right. Yeah. And then the, the surrounding lands, there are, there are horses. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. What did you try and do with your photographs? There's no people in any of them. Oh, yeah, there are people. Oh, there are. There's oh, you people. do? Yeah, oh, yeah, there, okay. Look on, the, look on the back cover. All right, I believe. Oh, there. These, oh, you're right. There are people. Yeah, but they're, not, the uh, they're the not prominent. It's, no. It's not social documentary. Mm -hmm. But it is people. I mean, there's a... Well, it's ge geology, right? You, you call it yeah, geology. I mean, people live on the earth. Right. Geological photography. Right. Why do I call it geological photography and not yes. landscapes? Yes. Okay. Why? All right. Now, as I said... When you say landscapes, people have a, have a, have a preconceived notion mm -hmm. of these beautiful places. You know, they're sort of idealistic, mm -hmm. dream mm -hmm. places, oh, escape places. But the earth, I'm not saying the earth is more beautiful than that. The earth is much more varied than that. Mm -hmm. And if you know the difference between the beautiful and the sublime, mm -hmm. you know, the sublime can be threatening, can be powerful, yeah. right? The earth is truly sublime. It's much more than these escapist fantasies, and I don't mean to put them down. They're beautiful. Right. I love them, you know, right, these right. landscapes. But it's much more than what people think of as landscapes. Right. Now, lots of people see what I see, yeah. and you can go online and do Google Images yeah. and see some of these places, but to a large extent, they're, they're, um, they're amateur photographs. They're not art photographs. Mm -hmm. But th if, if, I, if I hear about a place, I check that out and I say, well, I, I can go there. And, oh, what would I do with this? Well, I want to show, let's show oh, folks sure. some. Oh, yeah. sure, yeah. But should I, let's, now is good? Not now yet, can not I? Yet, not yet, not yet. Well, okay, well, it's we'll up to you. This. Okay, so here we have, the, I opened the book with this photograph from mm -hmm. uh, 30,000, mm -hmm. 36,000 feet up of wow. uh, a receding glacier in the Chugach Mountains in uh, southern where Alaska. Where were you taking a picture out the plane? Yeah, 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 just out the plane. Yeah, I do that a lot. All right. So how, come, how did you get it so nice that it didn't, uh, that the plastic window on the uh, plane didn't? I have my ways. You have your, okay. I mean, so it technically you can do it. Yeah. So um, I just want to show people, this is about the fact that these glaciers are melting. And uh, maybe you can put it up, you can put it up here like, like yeah. well, yeah, I was going to say you hold it up maybe well, like okay, this. Okay, but we have another one. All right, great. Now this is so beautiful picture. Thank right. you. And these are all in the book. And um, then, then it's dawn. It's dawn at Mono Lake. I call this dawn EKG. Mm -hmm. um, at Yosemite, on the way to Yosemite, right? That's right. That's right. right. Sure. If you if you uh, make keep, a left keep on hill. going, you'll yeah. go, or you right. or when you come out of Yosemite, right. you you, right. You, you get an overview of sure. Mono Lake. Sure. Sure. 60, 60 square miles and uh, very 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 salty. Mm -hmm. And these are the Tufa Towers. Um, Anyway, so the reflection right. with the before the sun rises, and yes. then we're going to get the sunrise, but we're going to change the venue, and I don't know if you can see the sun from yeah. this distance, but this is a balloon. Uh, I'm in a hot air balloon, uh -huh. and I'm looking over the very wow. rough, gorgeous, uh, convulsively beautiful, as Andre Breton used to say, <laughs> uh, landscape of Cappadocia, right. Turkey, as the sun rises. That's in Turkey. Wow. On April. And I can yeah. see the balloon. There's yeah. hot air balloons, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, I have God. one. In, I have a photograph of, all, of a lot That's of balloons. Turkey, I, right? I counted Beautiful 36. Turkey. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And now here we are at Mono Lake in mid morning. The reflection. Okay. That's the same the, scene we were just looking at. Well, not quite. I'm looking slightly in another direction, yeah, but, uh -huh. but, very, but very similar. And beautiful. You can see the reflection. Yeah. And right. the underwater. Do you use filters and things like that when you take these pictures? Or? No, not when I'm photographing. I mm -hmm. do all kinds of filtration in, 
uh, in, in this Photoshop video, and flash right? production. Yeah. Uh, but I was very lucky to have these clouds, and we will we will profit from that later on in the mm -hmm. evening. This the sure. evening of this day. Right. Now this is a very lucky photograph. It's actually a film photograph. Oh, okay. And it's the wave in Coyote Butte. It's a place so where use only a film camera too. Well, this is in 2003. I okay. no longer have this camera. This is a uh, 645, uh, large large transparency, and um, this place is an amazing uh, site of frozen sand dunes from mm -hmm. the Mesozoic. Yeah. This is about 140 million years old. Wow. when these sand dunes fused, and it looks like it was made by a Disney Imagineer, except no one's making any money on it, and they only allow 20 people in per day, so there's a lottery. It's very difficult to get in. And see but when I went yeah. in 2003, it was still on the edge of being known, but today it's known very, very well. Is it dangerous, I, you know, because of the flooding? Uh, no, no, no. The only danger the floods, is the water coming through. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. There's no water there. It's a desert. Mm -hmm. It's a gorgeous walk there. Yeah. You, you, you drive nine miles down a washboard dirt road, then you walk three miles over the slick rock desert that's absolutely beautiful. It looks like uh -huh. piles of ice cream. Uh -huh. And then you come to this place that's even more beautiful. Uh, right, it looks like ice cream. But you have to get back mm -hmm. with, with the water that you took with you. Yeah. And I ran out of water that time. I was practically dying on the way back. Thirsty, right? No, oh, it's wow. very, yeah. Always it's difficult. Water. And there are no toilets. There's no, right, no toilets, no nothing. No one's uh -huh. making any money. Yeah. Now, this is what I call a miniscape. I love this. Miniscape. Right? This, is, this looks like an abstract... Right. Painting, if you'll permit me. It does. But it is, and of course, I intentionally made the, the linearity go diagonal. Is that's, that stone? That's, yeah, of course it's stone. It's mudstone and, mm -hmm. and iron, uh, iron oxide. But I mean, I didn't take it like this. You know, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't make it horizontal. I made it diagonal right. because that's more interesting. And yes. that's, that's the artist's choice. Right. right? Okay. All right. And this is in Point Lobos, California, mm -hmm. the jewel of the California State Park System. Mm -hmm. And um, also on the charm bracelet of the California State Park System mm -hmm. is uh, uh, Salt Point State Park, wow. about two hours north of That's San Francisco. Amazing. And this is called Tifoni. And Tifoni are uh, formations, uh, like honeycomb formations, formed by a very complex chemical reaction of the salt water with sandstone. Mm -hmm. And this is a park that has tons of them. And, wow. and in magnificent formations. It looks like almost there. like it's alive. Like yeah, I went there twice. Living, right? Yeah. Now here's another here's another miniscape with more Tifoni, but in a very different situation. Uh, the Tifoni is on the left. How big yeah. of an area? You mentioned this to me. This How is maybe four feet across, wow. three four feet across, right. and it's under an overhang. They call it a gallery. Uh -huh. And I thought that these were formed by drips. Uh -huh. Silly me. No, right. no, no. The, first of all, the surf comes up and fills these things, uh -huh. and it's the it's the chemical reaction of the salt water. This is in Canada, over millions of years that form these these patterns. So that's now, a that's millions of years we're seeing. Yeah, right? yeah. But we just happen to have this puddle that looks like a human figure. I was going to say, is that you? I thought it was your no, shadow. No, taking a picture. no, it's just a puddle. It's like one of those pictures where you see your own shadow in it. Exactly, but it's right. I have a lot of those, but. Um, so this this is kind of surreal surreal to me since it it's, is. it's figurative. See the the abstract expressionist stuff is generally not figurative, and sometimes you can be figurative mm -hmm. and non figurative. Abstract expressionism that's a, 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 I think an American form of art. Well, that was originated in America, and it was highly influenced by the surrealists, the mm -hmm. late surrealists who came yeah. here to flee the the uh, Second World War in the 1940s, mm -hmm. and people like uh, Wolfgang Pahlen and, and Roberto Mata were surrealist, but they were moving towards less and less figuration. Mm -hmm. yep. And they were going towards, towards uh, abstraction. And then the abstract expressionists, including Motherwell was one of the earliest, mm -hmm. and then Pollock picked it up from them. Sidney Pollock, um, what did I say? Jackson, uh, Jackson Pollock, Pollock yeah. right. Yeah, he was the writer guy. Now this, <laughs> this is a, a, a miniscape, sorry, a miniscape. Yes, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's somewhat, that's somewhat the metaphorical. Thing. With, uh, I'll leave it to the, what, what, do, what, do the, what do they see? What, what do you see in this I image? Just, I just wanted to say that, you know, not, not every sexual reference out there is phallic. Right. And we, we see, it's you true. know, since Freud, we see phallic symbols everywhere, but not everything is phallic. Is that, is that a, now is that a color? Is that actually, it looks like a cave. It looks three-dimensional. Like well, it's actually inside. quite small. From here to here, yeah. it's maybe a foot, I think less. Wow. So and it's uh, underfoot on burnt cape. Newfoundland, way at the top of Newfoundland, uh -huh. and it's volcanic, and you have to be very careful walking on it because you can easily just lose your footing and sprain your ankle. Uh huh. Oh, I see. Now this is another 
this is another uh, landscape. This is Terelj, Mongolia, known for its uh, landscape. There's three, three different mountains, one right after the other. Well, let me see. Hold that up for one more second yeah, sure. because it's not every day we see Mongolia. And you see the yurts? Yeah, right. Yeah. The tents where people the are yurts, living. Yeah. Little town yurts, They're very they sturdy. Yurts. They're very sturdy. And yeah. here's this giant stone. It looks like yeah. it's going to fall it's off. And then another mountain. Extru extrusion, they call one, it. Uh, one, two, two three. three. Yeah. I see. Right. right. And we're lucky, we were very lucky with the clouds. A, s a straight blue sky would not have been nearly as interesting. Mm -hmm. Now th this, I, I call this um, swerving square mm -hmm. because it looks like it should have been just a square column and all yeah. of a sudden it swerves. <laughs> but it's, it's a natural formation of sandstone in a slot canyon. Mm -hmm. It's a small slot canyon called Rattlesnake Canyon. It's 30 feet tall. Is that Utah? Or no, no, no. It's, in, it's near Page, Arizona. Okay. It's, owned by, it's owned privately by a Navajo family. Mm -hmm. Antelope Canyon, the more famous one, is 60 feet tall, and that's owned mm -hmm. by the Navajo Nation. I see. Now, speaking of caverns and caves, this is my otherworldly... Uh, Wow. Yeah, this is a cave in, in Ha Long Bay, Vietnam, 100 kilometers east of Hanoi, where they take you on, on the tour. And the atmosphere is so thick, it's extremely uncomfortable. It's both cool and, ex and, and too humid. But when the light pours in from the exit, you see that you're walking Worth through a cloud. It. Right. You don't oh. you don't, you're not seeing the cloud when, when it's dark. But there's the cloud with that, uh, with that uh, So this, uh, this is a cave opening here, yeah. and you're looking into the cave, and here's the path. Well, I'm in the cave. You're in the I'm cave. I'm in the cave, and this is artificial light. You see the, well, the, right. the orange see light, that. and then this is natural light uh -huh. coming in. And you're right. not looking at the opening. It's, it's a little off to the side, but the oh, light right is there, illuminating right. uh -huh. the heavy, the heavy uh, atmosphere I see that's that. so uncomfortable. Uh -huh. This is one of my favorite places in the world, Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. It's their best attraction in wow. Northern Ireland, I've what they call this, the Antrim yeah. Coast. Uh -huh. It's from a 50 million year old volcanic eruption yeah. that cooled so fast, these mostly hexagonal, 38,000 mostly hexagonal uh, columns formed. And these are not crystals because they're not uniform. Yeah. They're more like mud mosaics. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you some wow. mud mosaics in a second. This is the tail of it. Uh -huh. That's where it ends into the water. It goes underwater for 83 miles and comes up on, uh, uh -huh. on an island in, in Scotland. Oh, wow. Now They're this, beautiful. We're getting into Bistai Badlands, where the color is not that strong, so I put them in black and white. Uh -huh. I call this Caprock Eclipse, and I, I, I actually crouch down to get the sun uh -huh. uh, on a very cirrus, cloudy day mm -hmm. behind the Caprock. Sure. But then this one... And this is example. I didn't. I, I I was there in 2016. I I didn't notice this until mm -hmm. a couple months ago. Oh, Looking wow. back through my photos, I found this. I said, "Oh my God!" That's, that's South Dakota Badlands. No, this is uh, New Mexico. New Mexico. Wow. So I call this Unreal City. It sure is. Which is a quote from T. S. It's like Badlands. So it looks like. Oh, it Badlands. is Badlands. Badlands. Oh yeah, yeah you can. And why are Badlands Badlands? They were called that by the Indians because you couldn't farm there. Mm -hmm. Bad lands for farming. <laughs> exactly. But nice for looking. Yeah. Taking pictures. Now this, this is a mud mosaic, and the name was given to them by David Munch in 1979 in his Desert Images book. But um, and where know, is this again? This one. Now this is in Cathedral uh, Cathedral Wash in Arizona, um, and you the typical mud mosaic goes off into the distance of of uh, like mud mud plates that crackle when you walk on them. But if you look closely, you can see some amazing formations. And this, with the outlines and the corrugation and the sand, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting compositional elements. I didn't think much of this at first. Then I saw it, a print of it again, and I said, oh, my God, this is really good. And then I looked, and I was seeing it upside down, mm -hmm. <laughs> where the concavity becomes convexity. Oh, I see. And it became more interesting. Right. But now it's if like you're a, a, a trick on your eye, an illusion. Exactly. An if you're attuned illusion. to mud mosaics, yeah. then this one, and it's this one, you, it's, it, this uh, doesn't do it justice. Um, I call this um, palimpsest. Mm -hmm. You know, a palimpsest was a medieval manuscript that had several layers of writing on it. Okay. They, they would erase it and use the. Oh, right, use right, the, right, sure. Use use the, they don't uh, want to waste the paper. The, use the, 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 the parchment over again. But here it's a palimpsest because there are actually three rainstorms that you can tease out of this oh, if you look that. closely. So, you know, normally we look at a photograph and say, oh, I see that. Oh, that's this. I uh, identify that. But here you, it really invites deep, deep uh, observation. Sure. Just as some of those big canvases by the late surrealists do. 
point right here. Like it's Mato. Hard, and then up here, and then over yeah. here. It's so, yeah. so these little cracks in the background, that's one, one rainstorm. And then you can see the, the, the tracings of these other, of, these, of, the, of the flow of water. And then these, these curled cracks, that's another rainstorm. I see. Where, where is this again? This is Bistai. Vistai is enormously rich. Where is Vistai again? Vista, northwestern New Mexico, up, okay. up near Farmington yeah. and Shiprock. This is very. This is also Vistai, and I call this mud mosaic arrabbiata, mm -hmm. angry. Right? <laughs> That's what that means in Italian, and because um, everything's curled up like. Sure. Right? But you can see these rays that come down, so mm -hmm. you can see at least two rainstorms here. Mm -hmm. Now, going from mud to ice. This is an ice canyon mm -hmm. in Mongolia on the edge of the Gobi Desert. Yeah. It's called Yolan Am. And um, you they have, Wait, they have ice in the desert? Yeah. Well, first of all, the Gobi Desert is not a hot desert. Mm -hmm. uh, and a desert is just some place with 10 inches or less of rainfall yeah. per year. Yeah. And they have, a, they have these giant sand dunes called the Singing Dunes. That's mm -hmm. uh, something like 263 square miles. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly not sand. It's scrub. It's pebbles. Yeah. It's grazing area for goats. There are some wild horses. It's a lot right. of different things. And then in this in this canyon area, how do you get area, to the Gobi Stag Desert? Well, you fly into Dalan Zagdag, and your driver picks you up, mm -hmm. and he knows his way. There are no signs. There was no GPS, and there are just tracks. And the tracks go all over the place, and he knows which <laughs> tracks. It was, and we didn't speak, we didn't speak any language in common. Mm -hmm. So he was my guide here. He would just. Uh, uh, wave me on. And there's, th there's this ice, which is very slippery, but very beautiful. Wow. Now, another, another land form. I don't know how, how, many, how many of these are going to Well, we got one more minute left. Okay. So let this me is, okay. while you're this continue, is, but I'm going to, this is, oh, yeah. if you're interested, you can go here. Right. Go. Amazon, do a search for earth forms and intimate, because there are a lot of earth forms. But if you do earth forms and intimate, you'll come up with my book. And then, or, yes. or you can go to my website and order it from my website, earthforms.net. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for remembering no that. Problem. But and there are also some very yeah, interesting showing, I'll hold this up. cave formations. This is called box work, and it's from Wind Cave, South Dakota, mm -hmm. where the, the Sioux tr uh, claim that uh, they have origins there. Yeah. And it's from a, it's a dry cave, but this is calcium carbonate, just like stalagmites and stalactites. And this was even more amazing. This is called frost work. This uh -huh. is from a cave in Sardinia called East Zudas. Oh, and wow. All these little things that are like Ten seconds. the size of, of, uh, of cotton wool strands are all hollow. And it's, wow. still, it's still calcium Thanks, carbonate. Thanks, Joel Simpson. All right, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. That's great. Me.